Real talk, when I was thinking about creating a podcast, I had no clue where to even begin. And then I found out about Anchor by Spotify. Anchor is literally the easiest way to make a podcast, as well as featuring tools that allow you to record and edit from your phone and computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast on various platforms like Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. The list goes on. Basically, everything you need to create a professional podcast is in one place. And to top it off, it is completely free. So, uh, my fellow creatives, download Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good evening, my friends, and welcome to a bonus episode of Terror Radio Podcast. This is your host, Keith, a.k.a. The Radio Show Nerd, and this episode is dedicated to my YouTube subscribers. Within two weeks, I literally have gone from 10 subscribers to over 100, which is amazing. And the channel is still growing. And this is much appreciated, being I am still new to this platform. So, without further ado, this is Terror Radio. The program featured tonight is one of my all-time favorites, The Hall of Fantasy. Now, this series debuted in 1946, independently in Salt Lake City on the station K-A-L-L and it ran until 1947. It was revived in Chicago in 1949 but only lasted for a few months. It went nationwide on the mutual broadcasting system system on August 22, 1952 and concluded on September 29th 1953. The series was created, directed, and produced by writer Richard Thorne, who also was featured in several of the episodes. The radio play tonight is entitled Castle of Lavoca, and it was first broadcasted on August 22nd, 1952. So, You know the drill. Sit back, turn down the lights, and listen to Castle of Lavoca. And now, the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of the Castle of Lavoca. One night shortly after sunset in the dead of winter, they say a carriage drove through here. A carriage drawn by four cold black horses. The carriage, too, was black, and the driver was clothed in a livery of black. He whipped the horses and drove them as if his life depended on it. No one saw who rode inside the carriage, but on his heels there ran a pack of snarling, howling wolves. He said that Drago, Baron of Lavoca, was going to make a pact with Satan himself. In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present the Castle of Lavoca. And now for tonight's story, an original radio drama by Richard Thorne entitled The Castle of Lavoca. We 
were on vacation in Europe. It was a warm summer's day. Doris and I had cycled out from town, intending to find some inn along the way at which we'd spend the night. Oh, what time is it, Grant? Oh, uh, let me see. It's about, uh, about a quarter after four, Doris. Well, I think we'd better find some place to stay before it gets too late. Well, according to the map, there should be a little town about a mile away from here. Grant? Yes, dear? Look, over there. Where? Right over there. Hey, why, it's an old feudal castle. That's just what it is. Hey, let's stop a minute. Right. Well, will you look at that? Oh, I, I've never seen anything like it. It looks like a, well, like history come to life. A walled fortress. Look at those three towers rising up from the walls. Oh, the whole thing seems to have been built in the form of a triangle. There only seems to be three sides to it. Well, from what I can see from here, it looks to be in pretty good condition. Mm, I wonder how old it is. Hey, Dor, I, I've got an idea. It's too late tonight, but why don't we find the inn and then tomorrow morning see if we can't go through that place? That sounds pretty good. As a matter of fact, you know, I wouldn't mind spending a day or two around here. It's it's beautiful country. Well, I say we do it. What about you? Oh, you twisted my arm. <laughs> Grant. Uh, yes, dear? Maybe we shouldn't. Shouldn't what? Shouldn't go through that place. Well, why not? I don't know. It's it's just that suddenly I I felt cold inside. <laughs> You're just remembering a lot of stories about old castles and ghosts. There's nothing to worry about, Dor. The man who probably built that castle and all his descendants are only memories now. And memories can't hurt you. When we had first sighted the castle, I was quite surprised because there was no indication of its existence on the map I carried. And what Doris had felt, I had felt also. When I first looked upon it, I felt, as she had said, cold inside. What it was, I didn't know. But that feeling had passed, and the only feeling I had was one of enthusiasm for the adventure that was to come the following day. About a mile from the castle, we found the town indicated on the map. A little place called Lavoca. It was no more than a village with a population of a few hundred. The inn was on the other side of the town, and as we pedaled through, the townspeople looked at us curiously. It took us only a few minutes to reach the inn and to enter it. A tall, dark man sat at a table, and he looked up as we passed him. Then he turned away again, obviously lost in thought. We were in a large room full of tables. There was no such thing as a reception desk, save for the bar at one side of the room, which served a double purpose, a bar and a registration desk. A large man with pounds of extra flesh stood behind it. Are uh, you the proprietor? <clears throat> do you uh, understand English? I do. <laughs> I was afraid... But I wouldn't. It happens that I do. Well, we'd like a room for two or three days. I, I hope you have something. All of my rooms are empty save one. It is occupied by the man you passed on your way in. I would be able to accommodate you. You are uh, American? Well, yes, that's right. I was surprised to see you with the world so close to war. Well, we won't be in this one. Perhaps. I do not have many visitors these days. The hospitality of my inn is offered to you. If I may be of service to you while you are here, please let me know. As a matter of fact, you can. In what way? Well, we, uh, we passed an old castle on our way here. Do you think it would be possible for you us to... You must mean Lavoca Castle. Why? Well, don't know its name. It's laid out in the form a of a... triangle. Yes. Yes, I know the castle. It has a particular significance to the people of this area. Well, can you tell us anything about it? Later. After you've had the evening meal, you shall hear of it. Come. I shall show you to your room. As he led us upstairs to our room, we passed again the man who sat alone at the table. He was staring at us and made no attempt to hide the fact... As we went up the stairs to the second floor, I wondered why the innkeeper had seemed so afraid when I mentioned the castle. 
I had no time for further speculation, however, at least for the next hour. Our time was spent in cleaning up, and Doris kept talking of other things. Well, I'm ready to go back downstairs, Grant. What about you? Hey, look at the sunset, Doris. Oh, oh it's a beautiful sight, Grant. Grant? Yes? Look where I'm pointing to. Isn't that Lavoca Castle? Yes, it is. Stands out so in the sunset that it that seems to be on fire. Grant, did you watch the innkeeper's face when you asked him about the castle? He seemed surprised. I I wouldn't call it that. I I'd call it frightened. Yeah, perhaps you're right. And perhaps we we should forget about seeing that castle tomorrow. Perhaps we should start back. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> you know, Dora, you make it seem so so serious. We stood there by the window, looking out at the medieval structure that stood there at the base of the mountains. That afternoon, when we had first seen the castle, it had seemed to be a beautiful relic of a dead past. But as we watched it, bathed in the redness of the setting sun, it seemed to be a mass of molten rock. Little by little, the sun slipped down and the gray shades of dusk moved out towards the castle, advancing slowly, covering the walls with the dark shadows of night. And then it was gone from our sight. Swallowed up in the darkness. I had a fantastic thought for a moment that Lavoca Castle was the dwelling place of of death. Well, the meal was excellent, and we were both quite hungry. At length, well, it was over, and our host walked over to us. Some brandy, perhaps. Not for me. And you? Or perhaps later. Not now. If you do not mind, I shall join you. Yes, of course. <clears throat> you say you wish to know about Lavoca Castle. Would you object to another at this table? I mean, another besides myself. Well, no, of course not. Malik? Yes? Malik, come here. Uh, what do you want? They desire to know of Lavoca Castle. Uh. There are strangers here? Yes, you you must have seen us come in this afternoon. You you were sitting right over there at that table. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. Uh, please, sit down, won't you? Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I know of the castle, perhaps more than anyone. But we'd like to learn some of its history. I will tell you the story. Then we shall see whether you are still interested in Lavoca Castle. The castle was built centuries ago, sometime in the late 1600s. It was built by Drago, the first and only baron of Lavoca, a man renowned for his cruelty and his prowess in the arts of war. War was his life, the only life he knew, and he lived for the feel of a strong blade in his hand. He lived for one purpose, to kill. It is said that the only thing Drago feared was, was death. He dealt with it almost every day of his life, yet he feared it. He feared the day that he would die. It is said that he made a pact with Satan himself so that he would not die. This is the legend. One night, shortly after sunset, in the dead of winter, they say a carriage drove through here. A carriage drawn by four coal black horses. Get out there! Get out! The carriage, too, was black, and the driver was clothed in a livery of black. He whipped the horses and drove them as if his life depended on it. Get out there! Get out! No one saw who rode inside the carriage, but on its heels there ran a pack of snarling, howling wolves. Those who saw what happened that night were frightened almost to death. The carriage drove straight to the gate of Lavoca Castle. And the huge drawbridge was lowered to a admitted entrance. The carriage rumbled across it, but the pack of black wolves stayed outside. They stayed outside, and the sound of their howling voices drifted back to East Town, and the people were afraid. People looked up towards the castle, and they said it was bathed in an eerie luminescence. The visitor to the castle was there for the better part of three hours, 
And then the drawbridge was lowered again, and the carriage rumbled out. It seemed to be going even faster. And the driver whipped and drove the horses. Get up, Get up. Till their mouths were white with foam and their eyes wide with fear. The carriage rushed through the center of the town and the people were so afraid they turned their eyes away. Lest by looking upon it, they should die. There were those who said they heard the sound of a crying baby coming from inside the carriage. But they thought they were mistaken. The following evening, the news was brought to them that the baron's son had disappeared and was nowhere to be found. And as the man stood before them, telling the townspeople of what had happened, the shadows grew together in the night, and from the distance they heard... listening to the tale of The Castle of Lavoca on tonight's journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy. We'll return to our story in just a moment. And now back to tonight's story, entitled The Castle of Lavoca. We sat there around a large oak table and listened to a story so fantastic it defied description. There were four of us in that room, the innkeeper, Doris, and myself, and Mark, the storyteller. He continued with his story. The shadows grew together in the night, and from the distance they heard the howling cry of a wolf. The face of the baron's servant blanched with fear, and he turned and made his way back to the castle. He never reached it alive. Well, of course, this is nothing but legend. Isn't that right? It is legend, yes, but it is also truth. But it can What Marek says is true. I would stake my life on it. Let him go on with the story. I'd, uh, I'd like a little brandy first. <laughs> I thought perhaps you might. For you? Thank you, no. Uh, uh, now then, uh, go on with your story. By your leave. As I said, they found the servant outside the castle gate, and there was a great uproar about his death. But the baron issued an edict that it was never to be discussed. And, of course, the people obeyed him, for by now they lived in superstitious fear of the baron. I must add that the night the carriage appeared, that night the baron's son was carried away. The war began. Of course, the baron went off to the war and distinguished himself in the field. The war was over in due time, and the baron returned to Lavoca Castle. He lived a quiet life in the years that followed. But twenty-one years to the night his son disappeared, it happened again. Again, it was a cold winter's night. The snow crunched under your feet, and the air was brisk and biting. From the north, the wind began to blow. Then from out of the night... The carriage appeared again. It was exactly the same as that which had happened 21 years before. Get up! Get up there! It was the same driver, the same carriage, and it even appeared to be the same horses. It flashed through the town and up the road leading to the castle, and in the back of it, the devil dogs ran, snarling and howling. Until the carriage rolled into the castle... They sat outside as they had a generation before. But it was not for long, for in a few minutes the carriage appeared again. There was no doubt about it this time, for very clearly the townspeople heard... No, let me go! Let me go! In the name of... Ah! And in another moment, the carriage was gone. The following day, the townspeople learned that the baron's wife had disappeared. They knew who had come to claim her. That night, war broke out in Romania, and the baron hastened to join the conflict. If I understand you correctly, both times the carriage appeared, war broke out? That is correct. What happened then? Just as he had done before, the baron distinguished himself in the war and returned to La Boca Castle. By this time, the baron was almost 60. Peace reigned for a period of 40 years, and sometime during that time, the baron disappeared. He died? 
I say he disappeared. When did he die? There are no records of his ever dying. They say he lies at rest in one of the catacombs beneath the castle, waiting. Waiting? Waiting for what? Waiting for the war. The war? The black carriage has appeared each time war begins, no matter where it happens. And in each war, there has been a report of a man who calls himself Baron Laboca, fighting in the battles. That's fantastic. Call it what you will, but when the last war began, the carriage appeared and drove straight up to the castle. I was but a boy then, and I saw it with my own eyes. The night before that, we heard the wolves. Each time the carriage appears, the wolves appear the night before to warn us of its coming, to let us know we should guard ourselves. Now that you have heard the story, do you still wish to visit the Volca Castle? No. Yes. I don't care what you say. I can't bring myself to believe your story. I, I think it's nothing but superstitious nonsense. But, Graham... I'm sorry, darling. But I want to visit that castle. If you want, you can remain here. No, I'll, I'll go with you. What about you, Mark? Will you show us the way? Enter the castle with us? You say that in such a way that if I were to refuse, I would appear to be a coward. I shall go with you, American. Tomorrow afternoon will be all right with you? Yes. Let us have a drink to your trip. That's a good idea. Will uh, you join us, madame? Yes, I, I will. All right, then. Do your trip tomorrow to Lavoca Castle. Uh, to Lavoca La Castle. Lavoca Castle. We went upstairs to our room shortly after that. The story Mark had told had been quite long and the hour was late. We went to bed, yet neither of us could sleep. Grant. Yes, dear? Don't you think we should go home soon? Why? Well, how long have we been over here? Well, since the middle of May. Well, this is August 30th. I've, I've seen enough of Europe. I want to go home. I think three and a half months is enough time to spend... Well, all right, Dora. Your... When we get back to Marat's, we'll make arrangements to go home. <laughs> Good. About tomorrow... What's that? What? I, I heard an animal outside. Oh, that was just a dog, Dor. Go to sleep. All right. Good night. Good night. It was the following afternoon. For some reason, we hadn't been able to get started until late in the afternoon. It was after three o'clock when we started out. We discarded our bicycles in favor of horses, which Mark had been able to procure for us. The trip up to Lavoca Castle was uneventful, and within an hour we stood at the edge of the drawbridge, looking into the courtyard. Shall we go across? Of course. It doesn't show any signs of age. It has been perfectly preserved. I'll take you on a tour of the inside. We can leave the horses here. Uh, I'll give you a hand, Doris. That's all right, Grant. I can manage. All right. Now, just follow me. Mark led across the courtyard and into the gray building. The huge wooden doors were slightly ajar at the entrance, and with an effort, Mark pushed them open and led us inside. We were in a huge hall, which must have served as both a reception hall and a dining place. From there, he led us into the baron's chambers... His wife's, which formed two sides of the massive triangle. Members of the retinue must have occupied the third side of the triangle. We visited each of the three towers which looked out across the countryside, giving a clear view of anything approaching. And then Marek led us down into the cells beneath the castle. Coming finally to another stairway, he turned to me. This leads down into the catacombs. Well, let's go down. Take a look at them. Perhaps we... Oh, nonsense, Dor. We both have flashlights. I see you brought a gun, Mark. Nothing could hurt us. Let's go. All right. Oh, it, it seems colder down here. Yes, it does. I shall show you where they say the day goes sleeping. What time is it, Grant? Well, it's... Uh... Well, it's 7.30. Yes, we have been in the castle for several hours. 
We have been down here in the lower sections where there is no light for over an hour. I shall show you the Baron's resting place and then we shall return to the inn. This is the chamber where he sleeps. Oh, Grant, there is someone in here. So this isn't a joke, is it, Mac? I have never been down here before. It is no joke, as you call it. I want to have a look at him. No, Grant, don't. I can't believe it. This man seems to be sleeping, yet, yet he's not breathing. Let's get out of here, Grant. All right. I've been nervous ever since I heard that dog last dog. night. You say you heard the dog? Yes. There are no dogs in this area. No animal will come within miles of the town and castle. The animal spirit. That was no dog you heard last night. You mean? We have no time to lose. We must get out of here. Follow me. Yes. It was the warning you heard. I knew we shouldn't have come. Don't worry, Dor. We'll get out of this. I wish I felt that sure. Uh, the horses are out in the courtyard. It won't be long now. The horses are on the other side. Oh, they're, they're gone. What are we going to be do? Quiet. Get back. Back over here in the shadow. Yes. Perhaps you will not see us. Grant, the drive. Be quiet. What's that? What's that noise? I don't know. The driver's pointing to the doorway. Oh. Grant. It's the Baron. Baron Lavoca. He's walking towards the carriage. Grant. He's looking this way. Oh. He, he's turning away. He's getting into the carriage. Get up! Get up there! Before our eyes, the carriage wheeled around the courtyard and then thundered across the drawbridge and out into the night, followed by the snarling wolves. We found our horses later and went back to town. When we returned to the inn, the innkeeper was relieved to see us. The carriage drove through here a while ago. I thought you'd all be dead. Providence must have had an eye on us. Well, it will happen tomorrow. What will happen tomorrow? The war. The war will begin. The innkeeper was right. The night we saw the carriage in the courtyard of the castle of Oka was August 31st. On September 1, 1939, the Germans marched into Poland and the Second World War began. <laughs> Tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Well, that's the show for tonight. I want to thank you all for listening. And remember, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash terror1970. Or you can look me up on Instagram at Radio Show Nerd or on Twitter at Radio Show Nerd 1. And if you want to drop me a line, a request, a suggestion, hey, even a critique, feel free to email me at radioshownerd at gmail.com. Again, a big thank you coming from Keith, a.k.a. The Radio Show Nerd, signing off. <laughs>